And for, I think the Rick Russo, and just a reminder to please use the raise your hand function for those of you who want to ask questions and I'll call on you and unmute you. Uh, Rick, go ahead. Hey, Rick, good morning. How are you? Good, good. Rick, uh, about the news that came out this morning, can you comment on Tennessee hosting Kansas uh, next January? And to follow up on that, Rick, do we know at this point what basketball might look like inside Thompson Bowling Arena this season? Well, we're excited about having a chance to play Kansas again. You know, we had a really good game out there with them a year ago. But uh, I guess my disappointment is, I, you know, I don't think they will be able to get the full Thompson Bowling experience, you know, where it would be sold out the way we would expect it to be. But uh, at this point, Rick, you know, we're working through all that, the, the, the issues. Yeah, we don't know at this point exactly what we're going to be allowed to do with our arena. We obviously don't feel like at the beginning it's going to be anywhere near what, what we know Thompson Bowling it will be like. But uh, as time goes on, who knows what will happen. Go to Grant Ramey and then Ben McKee. Rick, at this point, what do you know about your non-conference schedule, where it will be played, uh, when it will be played, how much work has to still be done to finalize everything? Yeah, Grant, that's a great question. I'll tell you what, it, it, it's, it really and truly, we thought we had it down a couple times, but it's changed. And uh, I think now we're going to still wait to see on a couple more. We like to think that we, believe me, we want to get it done. And we, we, like I said, we thought we had it done, but some things came up. Other teams couldn't do some things that we had to readjust and we're still doing that. And but we haven't got it totally finalized yet. We're close, but uh, again, every day something seems to pop up to where it makes us have to adjust some different things. And uh, so we're waiting on some information that we're hoping to get here in the next couple of days. And we get it. We feel we're, we'll be able to get something out to you guys pretty soon. Coach, I know it's somewhat early, but have you seen an improvement with the team's rebounding uh, this summer and getting into official practices? And if you have, how much of that is the result of adding EJ Anasicki? Well, it, it's an emphasis, obviously, with our staff. You know, we weren't very good a year ago, as you know, and uh, it's something that we've, we really uh, have made a conscious effort to know that we've got to be better there. And, and, and EJ will help us. There's no doubt. I mean, he, he does a great job of doing that. And, uh, but it's not just going to be him. It's going to be as a group, we've got to improve in that area as well as taking care of the basketball. Let's go to Jimmy Himes. Hey, Rick, do you know uh, what your season opener will be? Has that been solidified, even though you don't know your entire non-conference schedule? I'm actually surprised that you can shift from football to basketball that quickly, Jimmy. You know, It's a rare talent. It is a rare talent. We don't yet. Like I said, we 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 think we do, but we don't have it official yet because again, there's some things that we hope to get squared away here the next couple of days. Hopefully, that we're going to be able to get it all put it all together. And like I said, we thought we've had it together a couple of times, but but uh, things have come up, and so we're not in a position to say that anything is official yet because it's not. What have you been most pleased about with practice so far? The effort. I, I do think we've got a group of guys that blended the young and old guys. I, I think our older guys have done a really nice job with, with our young guys. And like everyone, we're having to deal with the, the contact tracing with our team. And, you know, we've had stop and go points where we haven't had the whole team there. We, and we still haven't had our whole team out there yet. But the fact is, uh, uh, I, I do like the effort. I like the intensity. And uh, we just are we behind? I think we're like most teams, we probably are a little bit behind in terms of scrimmaging. Normally we would be real close here to getting ready to scrimmage a, a team like Davis that we always did, but uh, we wouldn't be, we're not ready for that right now for certain. But, uh, but I just like the way these uh, guys have come in and approach practice every day. We'll go to Rob Lewis, then Joe Rexroad. Coach, what have you seen from Santiago from you know, ha having a full off season and being with you. I know he wasn't here in the summer, but he's been here for, for several months now after kind of getting thrown into the fire last year. Robbie's better. You know, he is better. Uh, he's better shape. Uh, he's leaned out. Uh, he's, uh, you know, again, he wasn't with us this summer, but, uh, you know, he was one of the later ones getting back in Urosh. Uh, I don't even think, I, I'm thinking back, I think he got back in August somewhere in August, but uh, 
he came back. He had, you could tell he had really his time away. He had taken serious to get himself in shape and, and, uh, and I think he did play a lot of ball while, while he was at home and, but, uh, but he's better. And, um, uh, he, uh, again, uh, worked on a lot of the things that he knows that he needs to, to do to get better. And, but I think he's been, it's been really good for him to have, uh, Keon and, BJ and Jane, when they're there, I mean, there's a lot of competition there that's going to help all of them. Joe, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Rick, uh, I guess to that point uh, with the new guys. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, to that point, Rick, with, with the new guys, I know there's going to be a lot of focus on what they can do offensively, but do you think you guys will get back to the aggressive defensive style you prefer do you have the kind of roster to, to get back to that this year now, do you think? We do. We, we think that we've got a chance to guard the ball better than we have in the past. We, we do think we've got some guys that are really good on ball defenders. And we actually, on the other end, we think we've got some guys that can create their own shots more so than we've ever had here. Uh, but defensively, uh, yeah, we think that this, we have a chance to be a really good defensive team. Uh, we got to continue to, to get there, obviously, but, uh, but we do think that uh, this could be one of our, our better teams we've had since we've been here. We'll go to Jerry Tipton and then Nicholas Hill. Uh, yeah, Rick, I'm wondering uh, how, uh, how COVID, very generally, I guess, but how COVID uh, has affected team bonding and just the overall preparation at this point. Well, in terms of the team bonding, I, I mean, I think we've got a close group of guys that do look out for each other. I, I do really believe with my whole heart that we, I don't know if anybody could do it any better in terms of trying to do all the right things following what we have been told to do. And, uh, but we've been slowed down. There's no doubt we've, we've uh, had periods where we've had to stop. I think we've had to stop twice and uh, uh, where we've just been, haven't been able to do the things. And we actually backed up our, season we didn't start like everybody on the 15th I think we went on the or 14th whenever we, we backed it up two days trying to again get as more people out there with us but in terms of the bonding uh, I don't think we've been hurt there at all we've again we've got a good group of guys that they really do like each other the chemistry is really good that's another thing I would say that I look forward to every day with these guys to see how much they really are helping each other and uh, they know that we're in different times they just by the way our facility is set up and the way we're doing things here but uh and they know again we we talk about it really with them daily about the importance of doing what what we need to do right now and uh but uh are we behind a little bit i, I think it's the norm I, I do i think and i and every day that, that we happen i think it's a good thing because it's something that we might have to deal with like like one day this past week uh, or when we started, we only had eight scholarship players on the court, which I said, hey, that's good because we might have to be put in a situation again sometime in the next couple months. But uh, so whatever whatever we have out there every day to practice with, we look at it as, hey, this is what we've got to deal with and we've got to go with what we got and, and make it work. And so I think all the reps that certain guys are getting are great. And uh, and the older guys, as often said, the older guys don't need as much as the younger guys. and and uh, the younger guys are the ones that right now that need the, the most attention, and uh, and we need to get that done for them. And Rick, if I may, how uh, how beneficial can the game with Kansas be to top ten teams in terms of uh, raising Tennessee basketball's profile nationally or internationally? Well, again, that's, that game's a long way off. I mean, but uh, I've always enjoyed competing against uh, Bill's teams. You know, we they, they play hard, well coached, and uh, again, I we were hoping a year ago that when we left there that uh, we'd have a chance to play them again. Like I said earlier, I just would love to think that it, they could have gotten the full experience of Thompson Bowling Arena because I think when it's a team like that comes in, I, I don't think there's any better arena in the country. And, to be a part of it and see it. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's an opportunity. I think anytime you go out, you have, a, you have a chance to always do something for your program one way or the other, uh, really. But uh, we, we want to be in those games. We've always said it, you know, we want to play one of the best schedules in the country. We want to, we'll play anybody. And uh, we're, we, uh, 
it's a challenge, but we're just, just those are the kind of challenges that you look forward to. Nicholas Hill. The, what kind of conversations have you had with them about what that will look like this year and how different do you think the, the conference schedule will be this year compared to previous seasons? I, I'm sorry, I didn't get, what were you asking me? I'm sorry. Yeah, hold on. Um, I was just asking about the uh, SEC conference schedule and uh, what kind of conversations have you had with the SEC about that and how different do you think it will look look in terms of conference play from previous seasons? Well, the difference is we're going to start a week early, basically, obviously, to give us some chances if some games need to be made up. That's that's will be the biggest difference. But I think after that, I think there's a lot of things that we're still working through. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I think we're all concerned about the, the, the contact tracing, uh, not only for our players, but you, you know, there's referees involved. There's people that work the games. There's a lot that goes into this that we're working through. And, and again, the SEC has made it clear how they expect things to be done. And uh, they've given us great guidelines to go to go by and to get our arena set up the way it needs to be set up. Our arenas will be different. Uh, and each one will be different some way, somehow. Uh, but uh, there's a lot still going in place to make sure that the that we're following every bit of the protocol the way it should be to protect everyone that's 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 involved with the game and everyone that's going to be there to see the game. But uh, where it's going to be different, and, and we try to uh, like the rules. I mean, uh, there's different rules that uh, that could happen this year within a game. You know, they're talking about uh, when a team's lined up to shoot two shots. Do the guys line up right away? Do they step back and not gather there until the second shot? There's all kind of little things like that that are still being worked through about how. So all those with all those things in mind, we're trying to assimilate as much of that as we can when we are in practice in terms of the way we're trying to do things. And, uh, and we'll continue to do that as we continue to get the, the guidelines that are going to be given to us. So Mike Wilson and Vince Ferrara. Yeah, Rick, I know you said a lot of the schedule isn't yet set, but are you expecting to have uh, the game against Memphis in Nashville still as a possibility? And are you also expecting to have Wisconsin and Gonzaga uh, as opponents this year? As of right now, I don't think we will have a, uh, any of the, the neutral site games because it really just doesn't make sense. Uh, the Gonzaga game is, is still on some way. You know, Mark and I have talked about that. We plan on playing that game some way, somehow. And, uh, but with the uh, Wisconsin game, it, it, we can't, we tried uh, to work, you know, that was our opener and we just haven't been able to how to, to make it work with, with what they have to deal with, with their league games and where the flow of the schedule comes in. But uh, for those three that you asked, the one that I think that is going to get worked out some way, somehow will be the Gonzaga game. Uh, but uh, again, a lot of that, that actually depends on some other games. If, if the, the bubble situation works out, whatever. But uh, again, honestly, I'm just, that's as honest as I can tell you because that's all I know right now. Yeah, on the on the bubble situation, I know you've talked about that before. Is that still something you expect to happen down in Orlando at some point? We're we're counting on it, but again, it's not set in concrete yet. We're, we're hope we're hoping it is, to be quite frank. But we're not we're not there with it yet until until we get all the the uh, again. The, the guidelines that we need to know how everything's going to be done there. And once we get that, we, uh, but that's something that we're, we're counting on, but uh, it's not set in stone yet. Rick, earlier in the off season, you had mentioned that basketball needed to learn from college football first before they could move forward. What's basketball learned about football being able to operate its season, although not perfect. And, and how positive has that been? Well, I think what we've learned is what we've seen, the unpredictability of it in terms of, you know, the, you know, when you, when, when, uh, when the COVID hit somewhere, how do, how do you work through it? Uh, I will go back and still say this, it's a mute point, but I still think that we should have started on the 10th to give us more of a runway, you know, but that's not here, but we are making up some time to have at the end of the year with our conference schedule, which I think if something comes up, which again, what we've learned from football, something, Will probably come up until unless something happens with the COVID uh, itself, and so uh, I think that we've we've learned from if you've kept up with the football programs where they've had to stop and go. It's happened to us in our preseason practice, just like it did with them. But 
as I was talking, uh, mentioned earlier, it, uh, you learn, hey, that's the way it is. That's the new norm right now. And you've got to be ready and be prepared to play with a group of guys that uh, maybe didn't think early. And so it's so important that you're getting different guys ready for different situations because of the unknown. But uh, uh, the fact is, I think we've learned too that it can work if, if everybody does their job and everybody, and even with everybody doing their job, you can still get hit with something unexpectedly. And, and that's what I was kind of alluding to. I think we've done everything we could to do our job here as a university and as a, as a basketball program, certainly with what we see every day and the way Mary Carter and our staff, Chad Newman and those, and the way they have done things in Pratt Pavilion, and, but we've still been hit. And, uh, but we just work through it. And uh, that's, and I think, and I don't think we're any different than anybody else in the country. I think we've all been hit some way, somehow. Ryan Shumpert and Grant Ramey. Hey coach, uh, how pleased have you been with your point guard so far? And has there been any separation there amongst that group? Well, I will say this, we've been pleased. Uh, we've been slowed down there a little bit. That's the one area that I will tell you that we've been slowed down because we think we've got four or five guys that can play there and do the things that we want done, especially in transition. But uh, uh, we feel good about that spot because, uh, you know, certainly Santi is, is – uh, knows I mean he's he's still learning a lot what we what he wasn't able to learn a year ago but Keon and Jaden have proven what they they can uh, are more than capable of, of learning it and playing it uh, Josiah understands it and uh, BJ Bailey's had to play it just because of uh, the contact tracing he's he's probably put more time in there than he has anywhere on the court uh, because of our situation so we've had uh we're doing some different things with our post guys uh, that we'd like to implement transition uh, that we think will not only help those guards, it'll help us as a team. Rick, I know you don't have a lot of schedule answers, but with the SEC schedule, do you expect it to be the normal uh, Tuesday or Wednesday game and then a Saturday game, or have you heard any? Yeah, no, I think, I think it's, gonna be, it's gonna be two games a week. Uh, that's that's how the way I understand it. And, uh, so yeah, I would assume it would, would, would play like that. You know, it'll be those yeah two games a week is what we'll have, and I Thanks. think it will be like that. Gustavo and then Brent Hubs. Rick, I remember back in March, you know how shocked everybody was with the COVID situation. Remember, your the Tennessee was about one hour to play in a cancel. How do you you know come with the guys and talk about this new up season? I asked the players even how you guys come up with this season. I feel like you guys should be more hungry because you're you're left out you know the SEC even the you know the postseason so how do you guys come up with the come to the season after being you know stopped to play at the SEC championship well I think all teams in, in college I think we all want to play I, I've said that from the beginning I mean our, our guys I've always said I thought we'd have a college basketball season even way back then and uh uh so our guys are excited. There's no doubt. Would, would, they, would they like to be ready to scrimmage somebody in a week? There's no doubt they would. I mean, and, uh, but I said we're not because of the COVID. We're not where we would be. We would do it, obviously, and it would help us. But the fact is, I think all teams are excited. I think we all know that uh, the one thing I think we all know is there is a lot of unknown in terms of what can happen. Because I, I do, from my situation, when we've been hit with it, it's been in a – in about as innocent a situation as you could imagine uh, with our guys. And and, uh, and I know it's bothered them because they have felt like they've done everything right. And but with that said, they're all excited about playing. And we just hope that we can get through what we've got to get through and, and, and have the best team we can have on the court every night we go out, I think is what they would like to see too. Rick, I know that you, um said you're a little bit behind which is to be expected but given the summer and, and the fact that you didn't have a normal summer guys got here late all the newcomers are, are you surprised where this team is right now from what you're getting on the court and the chemistry this team has well you, you're right about uh brand about it's not a, it's not a normal uh, summer, fall. I wish we could have had it for our freshmen more than anybody. I think they would be further along than they are right now in, in a lot of areas 
individually. I think physically they would be further along. I think uh, skill-wise they'd be further along. Uh, I think a lot of that basketball-wise. But with that said, um, it goes back to the way uh, – what I really have liked about this fr freshman group of guys that have come in, there's been no whatsoever sense of entitlement. They uh, jumped right in. They, uh, and I think that has a great, I think that's a great compliment to our older guys because I think they learned real quick that they thought they understood what working hard was, what commitment was. But I think when they watched John Fulkerson on his own in the gym, they watched Eve Ponds, uh, they saw real quick, hey, boy, this is, this is different. And uh, so their expectations changed real quickly in terms of, hey, you know, I've got to, Got to go harder than I've ever gone, and they there were there were some days we laughed. I'll be honest, we've laughed about it. Where you just running simple sprints, how they fell out, threw up things that were just things that you would you know. It's again they laugh about it now, but that's where they've made more progression in terms of understanding the physical side is much tougher than they thought. Uh, the mental side is uh, it's much more more of a grind than they could ever imagine, but. The best part, really, Brent, is the fact that they've come in every day wanting to get better. And that's uh, even when it's been a, a days when we haven't had the whole team, when we've had to make do with just staying in the half court, when we've had to go days without being able to go up and down the court because of numbers. But, uh, but the chemistry has never, ever wavered from the time that these guys have been here. I, I think we've got a really good group of guys that like each other and pull for each other and they want to help each other get better. Teresa Walker and Trey Wallace. Good morning, coach. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Kansas won't be getting the full effect of Thompson bowling when they visit. Uh, is it going to be something that maybe players have to adapt to the, the idea that being indoors, the game is going to look different this year. Uh, you know, uh, fans, maybe band, all for everything that all the bells and whistles that we're all used to. Is that going to be something players have to get accustomed to maybe? I, I do think so. You know, that's why we were hoping that we could maybe even get a game on the road in a situation that was going to be more like what conference play is going to be like. It's, it's, going, it's hard to, for us to get that done, but we were hoping that. Uh, I do think it's going to be different. I, I would assume uh, people will pipe into music like they do for football. Uh, I've had so many people tell me they that have gone to games that tell me they don't like to pipe in music, but that's I'm sure it, it'll be there. Some places will be louder than they've ever been before. I can tell you that. Uh, that you can rest assured on that. But yeah, we'll have to do it. We'll have to play around with it once we get going where we'll pipe in some music in practice and try to assimilate those type things. But it's gonna be different. I mean, just, we were, uh, we met yesterday about how we're gonna have to change the way we come into the arena, how the other team comes into the arena, how they leave the arena, how we do it. The number of basketballs, I mean, there's gonna be 20 basketballs out there in pregame warmup because of the way, the way things, there's a lot, you know, the way, uh, you know, I think the teams are going to be opposite the scores table, those type things. And we're trying to do everything to keep everything safe within the, the boundaries of the court, yet not affect the arena so much where people are so far away. And, uh, but uh, we, we were going through that yesterday, how we're going to try to do it and do it the right way to make it work for everybody and with safety being the first concern. So it's going to be different. Yes. Rick, this is Trey. When, when piggybacking off Teresa right there, when, when you look at the whole Thompson Bowling Arena as a whole, so have you guys been able to, and I know maybe you're not in these discussion, all of them, but taking what Needland Stadium is kind of done with their percentage capacity and then trying to figure out how that would work for Thompson Bowling Arena, because I would imagine – when it would be somewhere around the three to 6,000 range? Well, I think they haven't got to that number yet. I, I'm like, uh, I hate to, I hate to even say it, but I think it could be less than the 25% because it's indoors. Right. If we've got to that point yet. I'd also like to think being optimistic that if things get better as time goes on, we can add to some of those type things, but, uh, until they come out with a, a percentage, uh, I don't think any of us know what it, what it will be. What we're thinking about doing, we're taking, thinking about taking one of the sections in the upper deck and trying to get everybody to send us a picture of Jimmy Himes in a 
speedo and or uh, and you know he's supposed to send me a, a picture of him so we could he want to compare his body with Eve Pons and we're going to do a whole section like that and let it become world it become one of the hottest things going in the country it's in the mail then it's in the mail and Jimmy gets no he gets he gets nothing from it either other than the recognition that he is uh, he's a man of his word on that note we'll go to Jimmy and then Mike Wilson <laughs> Other than my six pack, uh, Rick, you mentioned having multiple point guards. And I wonder, do you think that's of a, a great advantage this season, given all the uncertainty? You like the idea of having a lot of different players that could play point guard? Yes, absolutely. Because of, again, of what could happen, uh, we, we feel like, and, that, and that we know how important that is, that position is on the court for us. But that, like I said earlier, we, we're even doing some things with our. That's where it's been good to have a guy like John Fulkerson around that's been with us. He understands he understands the point position. Not that he would actually play the point, but he can orchestrate a lot from what he, from where he is. A lot like what Grant Williams actually did back in the day to help Jordan Bone through it. Uh, we think Folky can do a lot of that, to, and he has done a lot of that to help these young guys. And uh, so that that's a another area that we're thinking about what you're saying that we want to be prepared for. But the fact that we do have more depth at that spot than we've had maybe, shoot, I, it's been a long time since we've had four or five guys that can play that spot. Mm -hmm. Obviously some are a little bit further along than others, but they're all, they're all gonna get there. Rick, uh, similar to what the NCAA did with, with fall athletes, they've granted that kind of free year of eligibility this year for, for winter athletes. Is that something that you would like some of your guys to potentially explore? And could you handle another year of John Fulkerson beyond this one? Oh, yeah, that was my first recruiting call that day. He was uh, – I got over here and I, he, first, first guy I talked to, I said, man, you're going to be a lifer. You know, but, uh, yeah, I, I would love to have – I've said it before, I would have loved to have had a guy like Kevin Durant forever. And I would say the same thing about Folky. I mean, they'll, they'll explore. Those guys will have to explore at the end of the year where they might be in terms of the future. And But uh, I don't think it – it's going to hurt anybody that uh, any, there's not a guy on our team that wouldn't benefit by being in our program another year. And, and, uh, but, uh, that's down the road, but we'll, again, we'll, those guys will have to explore their options and, but they'll, they'll certainly be welcome to come back here if they want to. Then, um, just kind of a scheduling thing. Some schools like Wake Forest and Iowa and Louisville are hosting kind of little four team events. Is that something that, that you guys explored at any point? Yeah, we, 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 Still are like I told you our schedule. We 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 hope we 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 thought we've had it done twice, and, and we haven't. And uh, but uh, yeah, we're again we're we still got time to explore a lot of different things. And like I said, we hope here in the next couple of days that we can get some some news that we can get it nailed down. But um, we still may have to go that way, Mike. To be honest with you, we hope not, but we 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 could. Rob Lewis. Coach Eves and 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 Fulke aren't necessarily the most vocal guys, but they're your only two seniors. How have they evolved as far as their, their leadership goes, and how concerned are you about this team with that, uh, that aspect? You know what, Rob? They're, the Fulke's much better. He is. He and the guys look up to him and Eve. I mean, they they aren't the, the raw raw kind of guys, which is fine with me. You know, I don't uh, I don't want anything to be phony about anybody and. And they're not. Those guys are very authentic in the way they do it. And the, they, they do lead. And you can lead a lot of different ways. And they, and they lead it by the way they, they walk and the way they talk and the way they go about their business every single day. And uh, But uh, I, I do think we'll have, have leadership. I do. Will it be a different kind? Yeah, I think every year there's, there's different ways and different kinds of leadership. But uh, I, I don't, I'm not concerned there right now because I, I know this. If we tell those guys we want something done, they're going to get it done. If we walked out of practice today and told John Fulkerson and Eve Pons this is what we want to see done, they would get it done. All right, we're going to finish up today with Gustavo and then Mike Wilson. Uh, Coach, how was your strategy during the offseason to keep in touch with the players? You know, did you tell them to do any kind of activity? You know, how was your communication with your players during the offseason and more specifically with Euros? And Santiago, since they were international players, and with this COVID situation, they were probably the most affect ones. As a staff, we, as a staff, we made a uh, the effort to have be in touch with them weekly, and 
more than that. I, I mean, we, our coach, I, I've said it before, I don't think there's a better coach and staff in the country than, than what I have with me. And those guys do an incredible job of the relationship first with our, with our players. I think our players know good and well that, that we love them and not just as basketball players, but as people, but, but we did stay in constant contact with them. And uh, the fact is we, and we told them uh, what we thought they needed to work on. We, we went through it with that. We had went through our exit meetings like we would uh, at the end of every year, talked about it and then told them what we wanted to see done. And, and I can tell you most of them, all of them, but the ones that understood what we were talking about. Now the freshmen obviously hadn't been here and we, we talked to them about the things that we felt they needed to be doing. And I think they did that, but the older guys, there's not one guy that didn't come back better than when he, when he left and uh, which was uh, obviously a, a compliment to them. But uh, again, I can't say enough about my staff because they, they really did the job of staying in touch with me. Rick, obviously Eve gets a lot of attention for his shot blocking abilities, but do you think you had a good shot blocking team as a whole last year? And do you think that's going to be something even more a part of this year's team? Well, I think we have a team this year that I'm not sure if I'd say shot blocking so much, but I think we got some fix it guys that can fix some plays real quick, whether it's up by the rim or doing some other things to get there to make it to fix it when it, when it breaks down. I do think that you don't want to be in that situation very much, obviously, where you have to go fix things, but we do have some guys that I think they have really good hands. I think we've got some guys that can really guard the ball. Some guys that really take great pride and want to guard the ball, which we haven't had a lot of that. We, we, we've had to rely so much on team defense. And one of the reasons that we didn't rebound the ball as well last year because we were just seemed to be always out of position and missing blockouts by overhelping or just not, again, being as, as good as we needed to be. But uh, you know, we got some guys now that can, can go get the ball for us and uh, be competitive and, and, and help and help our teammates probably more than we've had in the past couple of years. So if you, if you had to have one player for life, would you pick Kevin Durant or John Fulkerson? Well, since I got John Fulkerson, I'm going with John Fulkerson. <laughs> <laughs> I got him, you know. What they say, a bird in the hand is better than two in a bush, you know. But if I could go back and believe me, I could put together a pretty good team that if I could have them for a long time, it'd be a pretty good team, you know. But, yeah, I'm, I, we, we love folk. Yeah, I know that we, we, we do. And, again, I, I love the way he's worked and, and the way he has matured in a lot of different areas. And I think the way he ended last year really – gave him a whole different look on uh, the success he was having. It really almost rekindled the fire that he had that when we first when we first recruited him. Because he was a, he played with that kind of fire. And at the end of the year, I think it really brought it back to him where now he his love for the game is as, at as high a level as it's been since we've known him. All right, one last bonus question goes to Rick Russo. Coach, uh, talking about Eve Ponds, have you tasted his cooking before? Can, can the guy cook? You know what, Eve, where I walk in our little room off the court every day, I walk right by Eve. And, uh, you know, I love Eve's versatility. I really do. But I've had, I've eaten with Eve before. And what he likes and what I like, we're a long way apart. And, <laughs> you know, when he, when he doesn't go get a rebound, you know, I often re will refer to him as, a, as French pastry, soft, fluffy. So if I had to have anything, I would ask him to bring me a or cook me something like that. But uh, his versatility is something. He did play the sax for me the other day. We were in, we were in the uh, Pratt Pavilion, and he had his saxophone, and he got it out. And, and I hadn't heard him play it live since uh, I was in, in his home over in France. But he played it the other day, and he still got it. He really does. Uh, he's, uh, I, I still tell him, though, he's got to have a little more rhythm before he does. But, uh, He's another guy that you, you look forward to being with every day. I mean, he's, he's Abe Pons has never had a bad day. Even on a day when he's banged up a little bit, you know, first of all, he's, he's uh, as tough as they come. He's never going to complain about anything, but he uh, he just, he, he never has a bad day. How you doing, Rick? Are you, are you, are you back to normal, healthy and everything? Oh, I'm making it coach. Not bad for a 58 year old. <laughs> are you learning how to stay, stay out of the way of would be tacklers or blockers or whatever? My, my wife has uh, bought me the industrial strength bubble wrap, so I kind of wear that wherever I go now. <laughs> what do you guys think about Tom's little facial hair? Do you think it's uh, – and you all should know that Tom just moved into a mansion. 
I mean, <laughs> he apartment for a year and a half, and he moved in a house that's over ten thousand square feet. And he's got a he's got a she shed upstairs that he's got behind a, a bookcase that you wouldn't even know. I mean, and he's got stuff that he has stolen from different arenas around the country. So, um, we're having some audio problems, it sounds like. So I'm going to have to cut this call short. I really appreciate everybody's time being out here today and joining us. Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. All right.